So in this video, we'll be looking at graphs of quadratic functions, parabolas, and then how they can be applied. So here we have a football player doing the kickoff and this blue line is showing the flight of the football. So we'll be having some sort of scenario with a quadratic function and then graphing that quadratic function here with a kicker on a grid and then answering questions about in this case, the flight of the football. So for example, like this spot right here, the vertex, that's gonna show the highest height of the football. Our y-intercept, that's the starting height of the football. Probably about zero, unless you count like a couple of inches for the T. And then all the way over here, this is gonna be, this x-intercept is gonna be where the ball lands. Uh, uh, further down the field, how many yards it goes before it lands. So that's objective number one. Objective number two, we're going to be comparing uh, y equals x versus y equals x squared lines and parabolas, really focused in on what does this a do, the coefficient for the x squared or the leading coefficient. So here we have a quadratic in general form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? A, that's going to be the kind of the steepness of your parabola. It's also called vertical stretch and we'll be getting into that in this video here. Uh, Y-intercept and vertex, those formulas are there. We'll go over those in a second here. And then if you're trying to find x-intercepts, your main strategies are either going to be factoring or quadratic formula. There's others out there, but those are kind of the main ones there. So remember, we do have an axis of symmetry on our parabola. So each of these points has a reflected point on the other side of the axis of symmetry. Vertex there, remember those are ordered pairs, XY pairs. We have a Y intercept here and then some X intercepts there. So a lot of that is over here kind of as a big picture because I know with quadratics, we end up focused in on certain little parts and we forget the big picture. So this is kind of the, the big picture for parabolas or quadratic graphs. Okay. Now, as far as graphing them, here's the, the main part that, that, that we want to use for graphing, the main strategy. Okay, so to find the vertex, that's where we do negative b over 2a to find the x value. And this says f of negative b over 2a, which means evaluate the function for whatever value you got here. Okay, so if you like this way in your notes better versus this way, um, you can write either one or both in there. And then for another point on your parabola, you can either go with the y-intercept, which is the value for C right there or there. And then, or you can use this value for A, the, the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the X squared term. You're going to go over one and up A for another point or two more points. Now we will go over why that is later in the video. So let's look at this scenario here. A hawk is diving from a cliff to catch a fish. So there's our hawk. Here's our cliff and there's our fish there. The path the hawk makes is going to be a parabola represented by this function here. So we are going to take this function and graph it on this grid here. So we do need to identify the vertex and the y-intercept. So we at least mentally need to be able to identify the a, the b, and the c. So in this case here, the a, that's a value of one, right? ax squared. So that's going to be a one x squared. Now the value for b, that's going to be the coefficient of your x term. So that'd be a negative eight. And then the constant constant term is going to be your C. In this case, that is a 13. So now we're ready to identify that vertex and that y-intercept. Now remember the vertex, the x value, that's going to be the negative b over 2a. So b gets replaced with a negative 8. So instead of negative b, we have negative negative 8. And then 2 times a, a was a 1, so it's 2 times 1. So negative negative 8 makes positive 8 divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So 8 divided by 2, that makes 4. So that's the x value for the vertex right there. Now, anytime you know an x value and you need to find a y value, you just evaluate the function or plug it in. So in this case here, we're going to have a 4 goes in for x. So instead of an x squared, we're going to have a 4 squared there. Instead of 8 times x, it's 8 times 4. Okay, so here we go. Order of operation. Exponents first, we have a 4 times itself, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 6. 16. Then we have a minus 8 times 4 is 32. And then we have the plus and then a 13. 
So normally I just do uh, add the, all the positives up and then negatives and then subtract at the end. So 16 and 13, that's going to make 29 minus 32 makes negative three. You can go left to right also. So there we have the vertex. Now the y-intercept, that's just your C term right there. That's going to be a 13 for the y-intercept. So now that we have the vertex and the y-intercept, we're ready to graph. There's our verte vertex there at four, negative three, four on the X, negative three on the Y. Then the Y intercept is 0, 13. It's right there. Now, if you do need another point, if you're doing this by hand, then you have your reflected Y intercept, which is going to be right over here. Okay. So if you're doing it on a computer, normally they just ask, click on the vertex, then click on any other point, And there's your parabola there. Okay. So we, we got it there. Now, instead of doing the Y intercept, you can always do the, the value for A. And so that's going to be an over one and then up in this case, one. So you go over one, up one, over one, up one. And that would be your second and third points um, if you wanted to do it that way as well. And why it works, we'll get into later in this video here. So now that we have the, the graph, now we can start answering questions about the scenario. So how high is the cliff? All right, well, let's look. Well, there's the height of the cliff right up there. Now, where does that show up on our graph? Well, that's going to be right here. And that's going to be basically the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 13 in this case here or right there if you're just looking at the equation. So 13 feet for the height of the cliff, which is the y-intercept. How far from the base of the cliff is the fish? Well, here's our fish right down here. And then how far from the base? So the cliff, remember, goes here. So how far from the base is the, the fish? So there's where it shows up on our graph where the, sh where the fish is. That's the vertex, the very bottom, right? And, and then our cliff is the y-axis. So how far over is it? Well, it's uh, four uh, feet, okay? And we're, we're calling this one in feet, okay? So here we go. And then how far under the water is the fish? Well, the fish is under the water this amount. So on our graph, it's this amount here. So that's going to be a three feet below the water. So three feet, or you could say it's negative three feet if it, you know, depending on, on the wording of the question. Okay. So let's keep going here. Approximately how far from the cliff does the hawk enter the water? So here's our hawk here on our picture swooping down and enters the water right there before grabbing on the fish. Now let's go to our graph. Okay, so hawk swooping down, enters the water right there. This x-axis is our water level. And in this case here, this is going to be an x-intercept. So this x-intercept, it's not exact. It's between two and three, but closer to two. So we'll just call it about 2.3 feet. Approximately how far from the cliff does the hawk exit the water? So looking at our picture, hawk swoops down, enters the water, catches the fish, and then exits the water right there. So back to our graph, hawk swoops down, enters the water, catches the fish, and then exits the water right there before swim or flying away. Okay, so here we go. Another x-intercept, right? So in this case here, it's between five and six, but it is a little bit closer to six. So we'll approximate it at 5.7 feet. And this is how we can go going from some sort of scenario on with a with an equation with it with a function with it we got an actual picture here with this one and referring all of these questions back to our graph so now let's look at the main x squared pattern on a graph so we have it here but the way it's worded and kind of the concepts a little bit vague so let's back up and see what it looks like for just a regular f of x equals x pattern. Okay, so this is a slope type idea. So let's start in the middle here and we're going to go over one, right? If we go over one, how far do we go up? Well, we go up one, okay? Over one, up one, right? Not too tricky, okay? Let's keep going, right? So let's go over two. So start in the middle, go over two. How far are we going to go up? Well, we're also going to go up two. How about up over three? Here we go over one, two, three, and we're going to go up one, two, three. So same amount there. Okay. So this is a slope type idea here. Now here, quick bonus, right? Let's say we have a five X instead of a one X, right? Now we're going to go over one and up how many this time? Well, five times as much. It's five times as steep. So it's going to go over one and up five. What about if we go over two? Uh, well, on a normal one, we go over two and up two. Well, this is going to rise five times faster. So it's going to go over two and up 10 instead. So this is kind of the idea that we're looking at when we talk about these X squareds. And then we're going to put a coefficient, a number in front of the X squared. So hang on. Here we go. 
So now let's zoom in on that X squared pattern. So we got our graph here. Now, same questions as with the, the X or the slope type idea, right? So now we're going to go over one and then up how many? So we're going to start in the middle on the vertex here, go over one, and it's going to go up one. And with the parabolas starting at the vertex, it doesn't matter which direction you go because check it out. If we go to the left, left one, it also goes up one. So same direction from the vertex up or down um, if you're going over one. OK, now let's look at over two. Now, what's going to happen here? So we're going to go over one, two, and it's going to go up how many? One, two, three, four. It's going to go up four. It, same thing on the left, right? Over one, two, and then up one, two, three, four. Okay, so over two goes up four. Now remember, this is a squared function. So you're squaring this number here to figure out how much you go up and in some cases go down. Okay, let's do the three, right? Any guesses, right? Well, this is gonna be up nine, okay? So check it out, here we go. We're gonna go over one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? And then same thing on the left, over three, one, two, three, and up nine, right to there, okay? So again, this is a squaring function, so you're gonna go up your number squared, okay? Now we're going to expand this out and we're going to look at a 2x squared. Okay, so this is these numbers are times 2 for these ones. Okay, over here. So here we go. We're going to go over 1, over 1, and up 2. Over 1 to the left, up 2. Right, so that's going to be an up 2. Before it was a 1, but remember we're doubling these here. That's the pattern, right? Now if we go over 2, any guesses? Here we go. We'll look, right? Over 1, 2, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Same thing to the left, over two and up eight, okay? So remember, when we didn't have a number in front, a two in front of the X squared, it was over four. So this two means we'll take that up four and double it, right? So now when we get to over three, it's it's off of our graph, it's way up here or way up here over there. Um, but we do know our regular one would go over three and then square the three to go up nine. Well, this is squared and doubled, right? So now it's gonna go over, over three, up nine doubled or up 18, okay? Now let's look. One more here, right? If we have a three in front of the X squared, right? So this is going to be triple all of these numbers here. So that's an over one and up three. Next one over two, triple this. Instead of a four, it's tripled times three is 12, right? Over three, triple the nine and you end up with up 27. So basically what's going on here, and this is really the part that we're keying in on for when we graph, because this is going to make the, the graphing go a little bit quicker. Instead of having to use the y-intercept, we can also use this tool here. So if we have f of x equals ax, right? What does that a mean? It means you're going to go, you're going to find your vertex. That's number one. And then number two, now you're going to go over one and how many? Well, whatever number this is. So you're going over one and up A, up whatever that value is right there. So that makes finding that second and third point on our parabolas a lot quicker. So let's just go ahead and review what we've gone over in this video real briefly, right? General form, that's AX squared plus BX plus C, right? To find the vertex, the first point that we're gonna use when graphing, we do negative B, negative B over two times A, two times A, and that gives us the X value for the vertex. To find the Y value, you take that value and evaluate the function for the X or plug it in. So that gives us the first point or the vertex. Now to find the second and or third point, we're gonna do the Y intercept, zero C, right? Whatever value is there for C, or you can go over one and up whatever value this is for a over one and up a and that can give you three four points pretty simply there so again that that's for graphing quadratics so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave it a like if you didn't like the video please hit the dislike button twice just to make sure